The Divided Waters, A Tale of the Aral Sea Once, the Aral Sea was a vast and thriving body of water, nestled between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. It was the lifeblood of the region, sustaining fishermen, farmers, and traders. Its shimmering waters provided an endless bounty, and the ports bustled with activity. Generations had lived along its shores, depending on its abundance. But over time, human ambition and mismanagement drained its waters, turning a paradise into a wasteland. The Soviet Union's irrigation projects, designed to boost cotton production, diverted the two main rivers that fed the Aral Sea the Amu Darya and the Sir Darya. As the years passed, the sea began to shrink. Towns that once sat on the water's edge found themselves miles away from the shore. The fishing industry collapsed, and with it, the livelihoods of thousands. The once mighty Aral had split into two parts, the North Aral and the South Aral. One would fight for survival, while the other succumbed to the sands. The Battle for North Aral In Kazakhstan, hope was not lost. Scientists, engineers, and local communities refused to let their sea vanish. The government, with the support of international organizations, embarked on an ambitious project to revive the North Aral. The key to this effort was the Kokaral Dam, a structure designed to trap and retain water from the Sir Darya. Channels were dug, redirecting precious water back into the shrinking basin. The project took ten long years. It was not an easy fight. The climate had changed, and many believed the effort was futile. But slowly, nature responded. The water level rose, and the salinity decreased. Fish species, once thought lost, began to reappear. The town of Aralsk, once a thriving fishing hub that had become a ghost town, saw signs of revival. Boats, abandoned for decades, were repaired and put back to use. Families that had migrated in search of work returned, eager to reclaim their old way of life. After years of struggle, 40% of the North Aral's water had been restored, breathing life back into the land and its people. The death of South Aral. But across the border, the story was different. Uzbekistan's South Aral faced a harsher fate. Without a sustainable water source, its decline was unstoppable. The waters continued to retreat, and what was left behind was a vast desert of salt and dust. The South Aral had transformed into the Aralkum Desert, one of the newest deserts in the world. The consequences were dire. The exposed seabed released toxic salt and chemical residues from decades of agricultural runoff. Strong winds carried these poisons across the region, contaminating farmland and drinking water. The people who remained in the region suffered from respiratory diseases, cancer, and malnutrition. Entire villages were abandoned as the environment became unlivable. Yet, even here, hope was not completely lost. Scientists and environmentalists proposed a bold new strategy not to restore the sea, but to transform the desert into a forest. They began planting saxol trees and other hardy vegetation that could withstand the harsh conditions. These plants helped stabilize the shifting sands, reducing the deadly dust storms. The work was painstakingly slow, but little by little, patches of green began to appear where there was once only barren land. A future in the making. The Aral Sea story is not over. The North fights to hold on to life, while the South seeks a new identity as a green oasis. The people of the region have learned a harsh lesson, nature, once destroyed, is not easily restored. But with determination, even lost waters can be reborn, and barren deserts can become forests. The old fishermen of Aralsk tell their children stories of the past, when the sea stretched endlessly and fish were plentiful. Those who work to plant trees in the desert dream of a future where the South Aral is no longer a symbol of loss, but of resilience. The struggle continues, with each drop of water and each planted tree marking a step toward redemption. The Aral Sea may never return to its former glory, but its divided waters tell a story of both devastation and hope a story that continues to unfold, shaping the lives of those who refuse to give up on the land they call home. The salt bed left behind by the drying of the Aral Sea has been devastating to human health. As the water receded, 
the exposed seabed now known as the Aralcum Desert became a source of toxic dust and fine particles. Here's how it has impacted the health of people in the region. Respiratory issues, windstorms pick up the salty, contaminated dust and carry it over long distances. Inhaling this dust has led to widespread respiratory problems, including chronic bronchitis, asthma, and other lung diseases. Toxic exposure, the dust contains not just salt but also pesticides, herbicides, and chemicals from agricultural runoff that had accumulated in the Aral Sea. This has contributed to higher rates of cancers and other severe health conditions. Water contamination, as the salt and chemicals seep into local water sources, communities have struggled with access to clean drinking water, increasing the prevalence of diseases like diarrhea and other waterborne illnesses. Weakened immune systems, long-term exposure to this toxic environment has weakened the immune systems of many residents, making them more vulnerable to infections and diseases. Impact on pregnancy and children, there are alarmingly high rates of birth defects, infant mortality, and pregnancy complications in the region, likely tied to the toxins in the environment. Living conditions around the Aral Sea became so dire that some communities had no choice but to relocate. The scale of this health crisis underscores the far-reaching and long-term effects of environmental degradation. It's a tragedy that continues to unfold even decades later. The disappearance of the Aral Sea profoundly impacted the millions of people who depended on it for their livelihood and well-being. The communities around the Aral Sea, once vibrant with fishing, farming, and trade, faced economic collapse as the sea dried up. The fishing industry, which employed tens of thousands and was a major source of income, vanished along with the fish. This led to widespread unemployment and poverty. The exposed seabed, now the Aralcom Desert, released toxic dust containing salts, pesticides, and chemicals used in agriculture. These pollutants were carried by winds, causing severe respiratory illnesses, cancer, and other health problems for local populations. The lack of fresh water further worsened living conditions, leading to water shortages and contamination. Many people were forced to abandon their homes, becoming environmental migrants in search of better opportunities elsewhere. The cultural and social fabric of the region also suffered, as communities were uprooted and traditions tied to the sea were lost. Efforts to restore parts of the sea have helped some northern communities regain a semblance of stability, but for many, the damage is irreparable. It's a haunting reminder of how intertwined human lives are with the environment. The Aral Sea was once one of the world's largest inland lakes, located between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan in Central Asia. However, it's infamous for being a stark example of environmental devastation. Beginning in the 1960s, the rivers feeding the Aral Caamu Daria and Sir Daria were diverted for extensive irrigation projects, mainly for cotton farming. This caused the water level to plummet, leading to severe shrinkage. By the 2000s, the Aral Sea had split into smaller parts, with some areas transforming into barren desert land known as the Aralcom Desert. The ecological impact has been catastrophic. Wildlife habitats were destroyed, fishing industries collapsed, and communities around the sea faced health issues due to the exposure to toxic dust from the dry seabed. Efforts have been made to partially restore the northern part of the sea, like the Kokarol Dam project in Kazakhstan. While these efforts have shown some success, the Aral Sea's southern portions remain desolate. It's considered one of the worst environmental disasters caused by human activity and it serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between natural resources and human needs.